Plătim Rusiei peste 600 de milioane de euro în fiecare zi, noi țările europene, pentru a finanța nevoia noastră de energie. Și aceasta este întrebarea cheie pentru noi. Să facem așa ceva mai departe? Eu însumi sunt de părere că cel puțin ar trebui să luăm în considerare oprirea cărbunelui, petrolului din Rusia, deoarece acestea sunt simplu de găsit pe piața globală. Asta spune într-un interviu exclusiv la Digi24 Manfred Weber, președintele grupului Partidului Popular European. Manfred Weber, chairman of the European People Party Group. Thank you so much for this interview for Digi24. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Russian Federation started the war in Ukraine eight years ago, and the question is why uh, the West reacted eight years later? Good question. And to be honest, Europe, a lot of European leaders were very naive in, in, in managing the crisis with Russia. Um, you know, I was a, one of the few German politicians who said publicly already years ago that Nord Stream 2 is a major geopolitical mistake if we increase the dependence on Russian gas. And especially after 2014, the invasion in the Crimea, it would, was clear that Putin will follow a plan, he will continue. That's why, yes, we are waking up in a new reality, um, and uh, now we have to find uh, solid answers. And the first sanctions package was a solid answer. Well, Vladimir Putin is sticking to his plan, whatever his plan is. But we see that every day uh, more Ukrainians are being killed, their towns are being sheltered, um, Ukrainian mayors are being abducted and uh, their jobs are being uh, taken by uh, pro-Russian uh, people. Can we say that Vladimir Putin is winning? Well, first of all, we see that Ukrainians are really fighting they 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 are they are stronger than expected in the fight against this big huge military machine from russia that's why let's praise this and let's also do our best to support them that's why the delivering of weapons and munition was so urgently needed and again the sanctions package also has now already an impact so let's see about the next weeks and months ahead of us we see that putin is uh, surprised even probably shocked about the uh, about the about the developments in Ukraine that he was not successful that he thought he will be so that is the situation we are in I cannot predict what will happen nobody can do so but we know we have to stand together and let me express the Ukrainians are today the heroes of Europe they are defending not only their country when you listen to them when you speak with them all the refugees coming here now to our countries you see people who are fighting for democracy and freedom they experience what it means to live in a free society and that's why we have to really thank them for what they are doing and we have to support them. Well, Vladimir Putin was often compared with a chess player and one rule in chess is the fact that uh, the winner is the one who attacks first. And right now we see that he is keep on attacking. The answer of the Western uh, societies were uh, those sanctions and we see that the sanctions are coming and coming and coming. But are the sanctions enough? They are strong, that is clear. The uh, Russian currency is in, is in a very difficult situation. We see that the stock exchange in, 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 in Russia is closed, in Moscow is closed. So you, people feel it really in their pocket that uh, the value of the currency is not anymore so strong. So the first clear message was, we don't accept this. We are on the side of the Ukrainians. Um, but you know, the key question in front of us is now the energy question. We are paying more than 600 million euros every day as European countries to Russia to finance our energy demand. And that is the key question on the table. I myself, I am of the opinion that at least we should consider to stop coal and oil uh, 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 deliveries from Russia because there we can easily find uh, on the global stage also alternative uh, 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 sources for, uh, for the, our demand. So let's do this at least uh, with coal and with oil and let's not spend so much money to Russia. Is the, um, at the level of European uh, Parliament um, any talk, even informal talks, let's say, about uh, adding more to the sanctions when it comes to military support, for instance? The talks are going on. You know, I'm leader of the biggest political family in the European Parliament. And with Ursula von der Leyen as EPP Commission President, we are in regular exchange about what is next, what do we have to do. 
And again, the main message is that for the moment the package is a strong one. It's great to see that the world was united. Huh? When you even add the developments on the United Nations levels, then only Belarus, Syria, North Korea and Eritrea were on the side of the Russians. So that gives you a clear impression, a clear idea that we managed to keep the world even together, the Western world, the democracies together. So that is what we did on this level. And now let's see for the next steps. And the key question is the energy demand and we should reduce them as quick as possible. Uh, Ukraine is also uh, seeking to become a member of European Union and again we see, let's say, a difference when it comes to the uh, reaction of the European uh, members. Eastern countries are rather pro-accepting uh, the Ukrainian into EU and the Western countries are rather keeping, sticking to the uh, Copenhagen criteria. Um, what will it be in the end? Two weeks ago, President Zelensky was connected to the plenary sitting of the European Parliament. And he was asking us, is it worth to fight? Tell us, can we become also a member of the European Union? Are we welcomed? Tell us. And I was answering on the leader of the biggest group immediately after his speech. And I said, full heartedly, yes, absolutely. You are having today the European flag in your hands. You are today the the biggest fight is the strongest fighter for what we believe in, the European way of life, about democracy, freedom, rule of law, all what we also believe in. So that's why we have to give now a um, political message to the Ukraine people that what you are doing, it's worth to do it. It's, 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 you are part of us. That is the political message we need now. So other way around, I would say it's not about bureaucracy, it's not about procedures, it's not about theoretical questions. It's to give a political answer now. And there the West must be united. And let me be clear, I was a little bit disappointed about the outcome of the Versailles uh, summit last week when our leaders were together and were discussing about details of the, of the procedure. That's not the moment to do so. We are in a historic moment and the message to the Ukrainians must be, you're welcomed. Ukrainians uh, refugees are coming into our countries, especially in uh, countries like Romania or Poland, but of course from here they travel all over Europe. And uh, it's impressive the uh, way that people welcome the Ukrainian refugees. In the same time, we do remember that European Union is not uh, solving yet its problems with the uh, politics of migration and uh, the way the refugees are being integrated. So is this a good moment to change that as well? The Ukraine war gives us a clear indication that uh, the migration issue is an issue for all of us. It's not only for the east of Europe in this current crisis or in the last years for the south of Europe. It is a challenge for all of us and that is what we recognize step by step. Uh, um, I was really proud to see that all European countries opened their border immediately after the war started. So even those who are far away, Portugal, Ireland, imagine, far away from Ukraine, they are ready to welcome now refugees, they are ready to give in, and we must find also good balance that everybody really is, uh, is contributing at the same level to this big challenge. Uh, it's a moment where we can also hopefully close the legislative file because the crisis gives us a clear indication that together we can manage things and that's why let's close this open bound, politically speaking, of 2015 uh, with this crisis in mind now to also solve the legislative files on European level. Manfred Weber, chairman of EPP Group, thank you so much for this interview. I thank you so much.